Today we will be discussing a piece from the book, The American Environmentalism, 3rd edition, Readings in Conservation History by Roderick Nash. This is chapter 2 of this wonderful compiled series of readings um, about the history of the conservation movement in the United States. Um, it is a wonderful book if you ever get your hands, chance to get your hands on it. It's, you, it's wonderful reading because it's just little excerpts from all different authors. So today we'll be reading chapter two of that book um, and this piece is called The Human Factor in Environmental Change and it's by William Cronin. William Cronin is a very relevant uh, environmental historian today. He has wonderful pieces out there. He's alive. He's um, very active in the environmental scene. One thing to remember though is that he's an environmental historian. He is not, he does not tell the history of environmentalism. Two different things. He just rather wants to give you an environment, a history of the environment of the United States, well usually of the United States. Um, and so that's what makes this piece wonderful reading is because it takes you through a thought process of um, how we have constructed this ideal in our mind or this romanticized image of what we think the, the United States looked like before European settlers arrived. So think about that. It's the image that we have in our mind of what this land looked like before European settlers arrived and what is that history? How was that history developed? How do we know it's an accurate history? All of these questions that um, we should be asking in terms of the environment. So Cronin pushes us in this piece, it's a wonderful piece, to explore what environmental change means. So what does environmental change mean? Think of just the word change. What does that mean? Is it for the good? Is it for the bad? Does it matter? So lots of questions to ask here. And as we move through this piece um, by Cronin, he'll take us through um, what we need to do in order to create an, a somewhat accurate ecological history. And we must do this by recreating this history through what we have available from, from us. And he takes us through what those things are in this article. So what do we need to use to create the most accurate ecological history that we have available? And in the piece throughout, you'll see that he takes us through this ideals of what, um, especially here on pages um, four, well, pages 19, technically pages 19, pages 20, and pages 21, he brings us through this um, series of evidence that we need to collect and how difficult this evidence is and what problems there could be with collecting this evidence. He then brings us to the point here on, chap on page 21 where he says this brings us to the heart of the theoretical difficulties involved in, in doing ecological history. When one asks how much an ecosystem has been changed by human influence, the inevitable inevitable next question must be changed in relation to what and this is a very complex answer he says there's no simple answer here we need to try and figure out change in relation to what and another question we need to ask ourselves is is that did we change the environment or did the environment lead us to change. So there's lots of questions here. There's that um, determinism as to whether we changed the environment or the environment changed us or if it was both working um, symbi um, in symbiosis like kind of in conjunction with each other. Okay so these are lots of questions that um, Cronin asks us about developing an ecological history and the reason why this is really important is because we say to ourselves you know the land was untouched when Native Americans were here which is actually not true because the Native Americans manipulated the land as well to grow corn they um, 
you know, they disrupted the environment in numerous ways. So when we say to ourselves and we have this romantic, romanticized image of what we thought was here before us, is is that really like something bad or or is it the fact that we're just changing the environment and we've been doing this for a long time? Hey, in fact, there's been microscopic changes to the environment. There has been bacteria and earthworms change the environment without us even seeing it. Is that bad? Is all change bad? Is some change bad? Is other change not bad? I mean, there's just lots of questions to ask. And so as we move forward in this age of, you know, we need to change the environment, we need to make it back to what it used to be. Well, what did that used to be? What is an accurate representation of what that used to be? And it's been, it changes all the time. So is it even worth doing that? Or is it just worth looking forward into the future as to what we want the earth to look like going forward or what we want nature to look like going forward? The other thing to ask yourself is, is that, you know, we have this romanticized image of what land used to look like from pictures and writings, etc. And he, Cronin tells us Woods and Thoreau, right? He mentions all of Walden. He went, mentions all of these authors um, and writers of the time, naturalists technically of the time. But he says to ourselves, what if their accounts were different? What if their accounts of nature were completely different? Would those romanticized image that we have in our brain of what we think the earth used to look like before European settlers arrived, would that be completely different than what we think today? So our ideals of what environmental change has happened or what has happened since then is all based on people's accounts of what they saw when they arrived here and what they wrote down, and then what was passed through the system. That doesn't mean that there weren't other people out there who might have given different personal accounts. These individuals' personal accounts are the ones that we seem to reference, but it doesn't mean there's other people's personal accounts that we didn't reference, and that may very well may have changed our views on nature, and what nature, and made us, and developed a different romanticized view than what we technically have today. So, you know, think about that. Ponder those ideals as you read through this information. Do not forget to take your quiz at the end of this session.